Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here with Painting in Your Pajamas. And yesterday I had talked about creating an end of your journal. So I have a big pile of crazy stuff in front of me that I'll tell you about. And in yesterday's video, I showed you how I would use canvas covers to create a book and they're they're pretty thick they make a really nice cover so of course i had to make a sample book so i've made a, a sample book with some just nice white paper not a ton of paper inside i actually just used um some really beautiful heavyweight printer paper that I found at Staples left over from another project and of course the the first one was a little funky so it, it took me some you know time to get it all going and working but that's the way art is and that's the way life is it takes a lot of experimentation and trying new things and a lot of people ask about how to find your creative voice, right? And one of the ways to find your creative voice is to try lots of different things. So that's what we're going to be doing together throughout the month of December. And I have my hat on this morning because it's nine degrees and icy outside after a beautiful snowy morning yesterday. So I've got my hot coffee and I apologize. You may be able to hear the heater going behind me as well to keep it warm down here. And I'm going to remember to drink my coffee while it's hot today. So what I shared in my video yesterday is that throughout the month of December, I'm going to be working in this end of year reflection journal, and I'm going to invite you to do the same. Whether you make your own journal, and we're going to start tomorrow, December 1st, whether you make your, your own journal or you work in a journal that you already have made or that you love or that you've been working in all year, I want to encourage you to follow along with me from December 1st through the end of the month. I will be going live Monday to Thursday at 6.30 a.m. Mountain Time. You, of course, can watch anytime that everyone's an early bird like I am but I'm pretty happy with this little journal and it's just needs to last me a month. So it doesn't have a ton of pages, but it has enough that, you know, I could do a whole spread or a series of single spreads. And it was really fun making it out of the, out of the canvas covers, but I know not everyone has canvas covers. So I want to give you a couple of other ideas and show you how easy it is to put together a, a book of your own and I have decided I love creating my own journals. I love buying them as well. But of course, um, there's something magical about making journals, working different sizes. So a lot of times I'll comb used bookstores for really inexpensive books. So this was a children's book. I pull out the, the gut, guts of the book. I know that's sacrilege to someone, but otherwise this book was just going to end up in the landfill, right? And I don't want this book to end up in the landfill, so I'm repurposing it. I'll use the pages inside for collage material. I, this one is from 1979. And I would, before I put the whole book together, I would paint the cover. And maybe I'll show that in another live, how I would paint the, the cover. So this one's a little um, slick. It might take a couple of coats, but I would put some gesso down and then hand paint the cover. But I'm not going to do that today because my purpose today is to show you how to make the inside of the book. So you could do the process I'm going to show you with these canvas boards of any size like I did. So this one's square because I love working square, especially for they're perfect for my sacred circle designs. And I used paper that I had around the house and canvas boards I had around the house. I also used some gaffer's tape just to finish off the edge. This piece was not necessary and we'll talk about that. You could use an old book cover to do it with. You could simply use a manila folder and paint a manila folder as your cover and I'll talk more about the manila folders in a minute. 
For the insides, I love just this inexpensive Canton mixed media paper, 14 by 17 or any size, because then I can cut it down to fit the book size that I want to make. But if I want to make a book and I don't have anything for a cover, the chipboard backs of your sketch pads, pads of paper, these make great covers. You can paint them, collage them, cover them with just about anything to make a really nice bookboard cover. One of the things you will need is a really good X-Acto knife and straight edge to get a nice clean cut. But chipboard, even old cereal boxes, they're a little flimsier, um, not as nice and thick as this chipboard, but it's absolutely, you can make covers out of anything. And one of the things I learned from my friend Andrea Chevalu is about how awesome it is to work with old manila folders. They can work great as paper themselves. They can work great to create the, the guts, the inside of your book and covers of your different signatures. And I have made books that I just have used the manila covers. I didn't, I just wanted a book to work in. I didn't care what it looked like. I just needed something to bind all my papers into. So old recycled manila folders. These are from my um, stepdad. I love the old tags on them. So some of them have words on them. And I had this 11 by 17 pad and I had some old legal size manila folders. And I thought, you know, what could I create? And so I actually did the paper and then found a book that would fit. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would decide the size of your cover first and then uh, cut your pages to fit your book. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So for the canvas boards, these were eight by eight square. And so I needed a piece of manila folder that was going to fit across both of my boards and give me a half inch gap in the center. Right, so I know it's a little early in the morning for math, so I'm going to try and keep this simple. And I'll also um, put together a blog post with this video with some written instructions. But you need to leave a, a half inch gap. You can see that here. There's about half an inch here, right, where you're going to stitch your signatures into the binding of your book. So you can see. I have stitched these into the center here. So that means if I were working with a book like this one, and I usually eyeball this, I am not a perfectionist at all. And I love that these manila folders, they already have these nice folded seams, right? So I've actually folded them a little bit more so that I have this nice seam. You can see that that seam already fits nicely into this book because we want to be able to have room to put everything in the book and for the book still to close. So I'm noticing this one might even be a little big and I need to fold it down just a little bit. So I hadn't cut this folder, cut to the top to bottom, or I cut it this way but not this way because I wasn't sure what size the cover was going to end up being. But I'm thinking, I can probably flatten that out some more. So you can see I've used this manila folder and this is actually three quarters of an inch. So I have a lot of room in here, three quarters of an inch. So I have a lot of room to put signatures in here. But knowing that this is going to fit right in the center of my book, rather than try to have an exact measurement that maybe doesn't work right, I'm actually going to use the book as my measuring tool. So for this one, my cover is eight inches. I wanted my space in the middle to be half an inch. But if I cut these to eight inches, they would go over the edge and might not fit. So I actually did each side was seven and three quarters. 
plus a half inch in the middle, right? Plus a half inch in the middle. So I'm not good at math in the morning. So seven to seven is 14, um, three. It would make a lot of sense, Minette, if I would just measure the total and tell you. So I told you I'm not quite awake yet. So the total width of my folder ended up being 15 and 3 quarters inches. 15 and 3 quarters inches. And that was the perfect measurement for this 8 inch square book. Again, I had to fuss with it a little bit to get it to fit perfectly. So I actually prefer ones that don't require a lot of measurement, right? That don't require a lot of measurement. But now I know what size these covers need to be. And I use the edge of the paper here as a good guide. It's about a quarter of an inch. You can see on the inside where they put the paper, there's about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And normally I would just take this over to my paper cutter and trim it, but my paper cutter is all the way on the other side of the room. So I'm just gonna fold this over for now. So you can see what I'm doing. And I may even leave the little flaps in there. Sometimes it's nice to have little flaps. So the tools that you're gonna need today as we're talking through this and I'm diving right in, some recycled or a new manila folder, a bone folder, an awl. I ordered a new one because I couldn't find mine and it has way too fat of a tip. So um, it'll be great for punching chipboard, but it's not so great for punching paper. So I have to be careful not to get my holes too big. So you want a fine awl. If you don't have an awl, an ice pick, even a nail, not a rusty one, would work really well. You're gonna need some waxed binding cord. It's easy to find at your local craft store or um, online. You're going to need a, like a needle point needle, a book binding needle. So you can see this needle has a really big eye, right? So you want a big enough eye for that binding cord to easily fit through the eye. You can even, if you're strong enough, use the, the needle for punching the holes, but I tried that, it didn't work great. I've got a pencil just in case. I have some double stick tape. You could do this, the gluing with some strong glue, but I have found double stick tape is a lot less messy and easier to work with. Um, I bought this on, um, Amazon and it's called Suk Wang, Suk Wang tape, Suk Wang. So it's easy to find on Amazon or other craft stores sell it as well. And I they sell it in sheets and rolls. I like the roll, comes in all different sizes. This is, I think the one inch, I really like the one inch. So I've got my double stick tape, which is what we're gonna use to attach this inside of our book. I've already made some signatures and I'll talk about what a signature is in just a minute. And again, I have this big pad of mixed media paper. I have some extra manila folders. You could use paper bags, recycled paper. I love using newsprint that I have used for my under papers where I'm painting. And a lot of people talk about junk journaling. And one of the things that I've learned about myself is I love starting with white paper. Other people like starting with lots of mixed media or things that already have paint and collage, but I really love a blank page more than I do a junk journal. But this is your book so you get to make it with whatever you choose. More coffee helps with bookmaking for sure. So here's a good example of clearly a page I was using up some leftover paint on so let's just bind that baby into this book all right that's gotta be two sheets okay so i've already done some so i'm gonna put this aside so again canson mixed media you can get these on sale watch for when 
Michaels or Joann's have their pads of paper, buy one, get one free, or buy one, get one half off, and stock up on pads of paper if you love making your own journals. So I'm just getting all the little fidgety bits off the end here. And as I was sitting down here with my first cup of coffee this morning, trying to decide if I wanted to demo, I have two other painted canvas boards prepared. And I'm like, what could I do that was a little bit different and maybe even easier to make if people did not have the, the canvas boards? Let's see if I could lift this up a little bit. And get a little wider view. Bear with me for just a second. All right, there we go. So I have these two pieces of paper that are 14 by 17, and I was looking, I was poking around for old paper, and I thought these were already pulled out. I'm like, how can I use these and not waste any paper? So that's how I decided the size, because when I made the eight by eight book, my paper was 12 by 18. So I ended up with a bunch of little leftover scrappy bits of this nice paper, which I'll probably use for, you know, um, putting paint on or creating collage fodder. But this one is very neatly trimmed. And I thought I want something a little bit simpler. So I decided I just kind of looked at my paper and thought, how can I most effectively use this paper? And that was actually how I decided on the size of the journal. And I have a box of old books, so it was pretty easy to find a book cover that fit. So what I did what to create the folded sheets of paper is I folded them in half. Definitely want a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, a pair of scissors works really well also. So we're gonna fold these in half. If you've made lots of books, this is, as you know, one of the simplest, fastest ways to make a book. No fancy stitching. For me, I want, my journals are very utilitarian. I use them a lot. I work hard in them. So these aren't about making fancy books. If you love making fancy books, then I highly recommend you go over and check out Ali Manning and Vintage Page Designs. She is a master at teaching people how to make really beautiful, fancy handmade books. But for me, I just want the things that I can work in. All right. So now to make these fit my book, obviously, I'm just going to fold them in half long ways. And if I were Allie, I would be talking all about the grain of the paper and all kinds of amazing things. But remember, this is the non-perfectionist approach you will learn about me as we go on together. I am not a perfectionist. I want this part especially to be simple and easy so that I can get to creating in my book as fast as possible. So that I can get to creating in my book as fast as possible. And starting tomorrow, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some of my absolute favorite end of year reflection questions. I'll share one a day, talk about that what that question means to me and then I will be creating a journal spread using some of my favorite materials all throughout the month of December to dive really deep into some personal end of year reflection. So if you've never made a book before, books are made of signatures and all the signature means is a stack of paper that's that are tucked inside of each other and the signatures are what get stitched into 
our manila file folder and then the whole folder is going to get adhered to the inside of this book to create our very own journal. So I'm going to come back over here and finish what I was doing. These are a little bit fussy to fold, which is why it's so nice that the centers of them come with these already folded lines. And I love things that flip in and out, or I might actually seal this and create a nice little pocket in the back of my journal here. All right, so this is what I'm going to be stitching my signatures into is this manila file folder, which is size to fit inside of my book, more or less. Once we get it stitched in there, I can always come back and trim it, but I'm okay if it's sticking out as well. That doesn't bug me. I kind of like that. And I might need to soften my bind a little bit. We'll find out as we go along. But for now, it's good enough. That little one's going to bug me, so I'm going to tear that one off, but I'm going to leave the big one. A metal ruler is your best friend for tearing paper. It's going to make it easier to see if I have measured this properly and this is going to fit inside of here and it's going to be good. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside. I know I'm going to want to paint it. So a signature is a stack of papers that we're going to stitch into this little manila folder. And we don't want our signatures to be too thick because what happens if you stick too many of them together all at the same time is they actually don't fit neatly together. What happens is that the inside ones won't tuck all the way to the spine and they'll start to stick out especially with thicker paper, especially with thicker paper. So this thicker paper, really I'm doing three sheets of paper. So I took one, two, three sheets of paper. And now there are two signatures already that I can find into my book. But I also took some old legal size manila file folders, cut them, just tore them in half, folded them. And I love painting on manila folder. I learned that from my friend Andrea Shablu from a work art studio. And then they also make a nice sort of covering for our signatures. And I love that some of them have tags on them as well. Here comes Diego to say hello. So I'm gonna stick both of these. There was an old green one. We'll see how it goes painting on that. So I've got three pieces of mixed media paper. Can't get that one open. And I've tucked that inside of these file folders. This is going to be a pretty nice size, juicy book. And I didn't plan on the math working out, but somehow I managed to get the exact right number of pages. So here I have four signatures going to stack them like that. Four signatures, each of them with a manila folder, my choice, you could do this all with paper, and three sheets of mixed media paper on the inside. And this is going to make a really nice, yummy journal for all kinds of mixed media play.
And now I'm going to show you how we're going to bind these into this folder, right? So you can see it's already starting to take some nice shape here. And the first thing we need to do is create a binding guide. And I forgot my punching cradle, so bear with me for just a second. And I'm going to go grab that on the other side of my studio. All right, sorry about that. If you're watching the recording, you can fast forward through that part. I also got a piece of scratch paper to make my punching guide. And this is a cool little hole punching dealie created by DD Katrin from Umwell Studio. It's a really nice thing to have. You can use an old book an old telephone book or another old book also works great for this. You can just use the inside of the book or the back of a pad of paper. Also, you just want to have something that you're not going to be punching holes in the surface of what you're going to work on. So the first thing we want to do is create a punching guide. You can see this is from a class that I taught that's available on my Teachable. We did a super fun Zentangle pumpkin class in November. The recording of that class is there. One of the things to know about me is I love to teach live. I don't offer a lot of pre-recorded classes because it's really makes me a lot happier to connect with people live in person. All right, so I've got this little slip of paper that is the same height as my book and each of my signatures as well. And this is a great cheat. So I'm gonna fold that piece of paper in half. I learned this from my friend Andrea and then in half again. And now I know where I'm going to punch my holes in my book at each of these lines. Here's my pencil. Let's do this way so you can see. So I'm going to punch a hole here. I'm going to punch a hole here. I'm going to punch a hole here. So a piece of scratch paper, folded hot dog style, folded in half and in half, gives me a hole punching guide. at even thirds across the length of my book. So it doesn't matter what height your book is, this process will work for that. And then I'm gonna use this guide to make the marks for where my signatures are gonna go. And we have four signatures. So we need one, two, three, four holes. in each of these places. These are where I'm gonna stick my signatures in. So I've got one, two, three, four holes for four signatures, more or less evenly spaced across here. This is so I know where to stitch my signatures in. Then I'm gonna take my awl and I'm gonna be super careful because like I said, it's way too fat. I don't want to punch too hard and make my holes too big. I did that on my sample book. And I'm just punching a little hole in each of those places, right? You can just see I'm punching a hole in each of those places. You can see that hole on the back side as well. 
And I'm going to go ahead and do all 12. Again, I, like I said, I have this huge all. So see, I got that hole way too big. Is a problem. And we'll see how we go along. We might need to adjust that one or put a piece of tape over it, which is why I love Gaffer's tape. G A F F E R S. It's a black or white tape used by plumbers can paint on it, which I love. All right, so I have my 12 holes in my spine here. And Gaffer's tape is what I used, was the black tape that I used on this book, right, to just have a nice cover over this one. But also, I had the same challenge with this all, and so I just reinforced my manila folder with that gaffer's tape. If you're worried about your signatures coming out, it's a great thing to put in there and then just punch through. Okay, so that's ready to go. So now we're gonna punch our signatures. I'm gonna start from the bottom because I want them all to be even at the bottom. I'm gonna open up to the center of my signature. Hold this in where I can see all my marks that I made. I'm going to tuck my guide. Make sure I'm in the center. And it's a great idea to write top or bottom on your guide and make sure you punch all your signatures the same. So this one has a guide, which is really helpful, but if you write a little T for top, you will make sure all your signatures come out the same. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna poke a little hole all the way through. And I'm actually gonna go back one more time and make sure I get all the way through that back to make the stitching easy. You can see why this or the inside of a book makes it so much easier to do your punching. So again, lining up my bottom, putting my guide in there. This makes sure that I'm getting it right in the seam of that paper, right in the seam of the paper and not Kind of off to the edge, right? See how that's right inside the seam? That's what we want. Okay, so I'm going to do this two more times. And I'm going to show you how to put it all together. Get these all nice and lined up. punch, 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 and I'm punching them all in the same place using that same awesome guide. Just want to make sure I'm getting that all the way through to the back. Number three. And number four. Again, if you want to learn how to make really beautiful fancy books, I would encourage you to check out Ellie Manning's Handmade Book Club. In fact, she has uh, a challenge going on right now and she's getting ready to open her Handmade Book Club book for registration. All right, so we have our four signatures which we are going to bind into this vanilla folder, one at a time. So we're going to need our binding thread. Oh, I brought my scissors over here. Let me go grab my scissors.
So my actual workspace, this is my office. You can see behind me, my desk, where I do my daily work and a lot of Zoom calls. And then there's a whole nother area of the studio that is my personal workspace. And we wanted a nice clean space separate from that for recording. And I uh, don't always remember to bring all the things over. Okay, so I have this nice waxed binding cord. And I'm gonna just kind of randomly measure about two times the height of my book. And I need four of those, right? So I need four pieces of string. This is like book binding 101 for the people that have never tried making a book before. This is a great way to start or for the people like me that are lazy and don't want a fancy book or to spend a lot of time on the book itself, but really want to create a really nice journal that they can work in ongoing. All right. So I'm going to thread my needle, leaving a fair amount of tail on there just to make it easier. And I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start on the left and work my way to the right, but you're going to see me do this four times. Again, if you're not watching live, you can 100% uh, fast forward through this part once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to go through the middle hole first. leaving a fair amount on the other side because I'm going to want to tie it off at the end. I'm going to open this up to the middle, making sure my pages are together. The hardest part is getting it started. Take your time with this part. I want to bring that all the way through. I don't worry too much about tightening it up until the end. Again, making sure that you know which is the top and which is the bottom. I know which are my bottoms because all the bottoms are flat. So I'm going from the middle to the top hole, making sure I'm going down the same hole that I came up in, right? So I started on the left, not the right. So I need to come back over here to the leftmost hole. Start to pull that in. Then I'm gonna skip all the way to the bottom hole. Like I said, this is a very quick, easy, fast binding. All we're trying to do is get the pages attached. We're not focused on the binding because we're not gonna see any of this. So I came up through that bottom hole. Then I'm gonna go back down through the middle, being careful not to split my thread and come all the way out the back side of my book again. All the way out the back side of my book again. And then I'm going to make sure my thread is on either side of, come on, get under there, the cord that's going through the book. I'm going to pull it snug and then I'm just going to do a double knot. And that's all it takes to get that first signature stitched in. Trim those a little bit. And then I'm going to repeat that process with my other four signatures. I tell everyone that watches my classes and my work to notice that I'm left-handed, so everything I'm doing may feel backwards to you. So it can be really valuable to make sure that if it feels awkward and you wonder what's going on, you might just try reversing the direction of the things that I'm doing. They may not feel natural for you and there's a good reason for that because you're used to working left to right where I tend to work right to left or vice versa. 
So again, I went into the very next hole in the center. This one I came out the bottom, doesn't really matter. Go out the back side, all the way up to the top. So again, you can work top to bottom, bottom to top. And it's getting easier after we get that first one in there, you can see me. And then right back out that middle one. You can start from the inside and have your threads on the inside too. I like to work from the outside in with this kind of a book because once I put the this inside those hardback covers, I don't need to see all the thread bits, right? I don't need to see all the thready bits. All right, let's pull that tight. Pull those threads a little bit. Okay. That's two. So once you get the hang of this, it goes pretty darn fast, as you can see. Thread our needle. I'm going to come in the center, leaving enough to tie it off at the end. My pajamas are falling off. Sorry about that. And I'm going to go out the bottom again, just making sure I'm staying in that same row. This is the one where I have a little bit of issue with my hole punching, so we'll see how I do. And again, right out there. So I'm just being a little tender with this one because my holes were a little close together there. So I'm trying to keep those separate. And I did not keep them separate. So we'll just um, budget and see what we can figure out. And you notice that it seems like there's some wasted thread here and I've got some extra pieces. I probably could have cut them a little bit shorter, but it makes it harder to work with and harder to tie off at the end. So I like working with that little bit of extra thread. Those didn't get very even and the shorter pieces are harder to tie off. Okay, and we're off to our last one. <laughs> So what I love about the hand painted canvas covers or even these book boards, which are basically the, the same thing that are hand painted, these like lovely holiday gifts for people who love to journal. And you can put art paper in them, you can put just nice writing paper or sketch paper in them. So once you learn how to do this, you can create some really, really lovely gifts for people. Okay. Come back in. I think we're gonna be okay. Right in the center of that one. Go out the top to the top hole, all the way down to the bottom. Into that bottom hole. Out the center. Pull that through. That would seem even longer. And I love these little mint tins are great for needles. I've got a little piece of 
magnet in the top as well, but they're great for storing needles and little bits and bobs of things. Pull that one in nice and tight. Now I'm gonna to be torn which one of these books that I wanna work in for the rest of the month. Now I have two fun journals. This one's a little bit bigger, just a different shape. But here I have a journal. So I could literally stop here, let this be the cover. but I won't. I'm gonna show you how to stick it in the book. It's feeling like it's a little bit big for this book. I have to squeeze it in there a little bit. That's okay. This is a handmade book, so I love when I've got bits hanging out. So for me, it never needs to, to be perfect. So my edges are just a little bit longer than my book. Because remember, I didn't measure anything. If I wanted it to be perfect, I would have measured. So now I'm going to come in with this nice double stick tape. And I'm gonna stay inside those white lines there. It's very, very sticky, so you'll need to clean your scissors off after using it. I don't care if it's perfectly straight, doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna see it. Everything's bouncing around on the desk. Okay, I just need a short piece for the top. I don't really want them overlapping. Makes it hard to get the, the teeth off. Let's cut some of these pieces off and we'll just stick them in the center here. And once this is down, you can't move it. So you want to get it in the, exactly where you want it. And to make it easy to peel the top off, I like and to just make sure it's really adhered. This is super, super sick tape. I like to just run my bone folder over it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the tape down on both sides. Now, normally I would paint the cover before I found the pages and signatures in. But since I decided last minute this morning to use this book cover, clearly it's not painted, but there's no reason not to paint it once the pages are found in. And especially because with the book that we created, it'll should lay pretty flat. I definitely really like to work on the book covers when they're flat. All right. I know it's so exciting watching me put tape down on the page. This is definitely a very practical lesson today. Getting it started is always the hardest part. And so that bone folder makes sure that we get the bottom stuck so we can pull off the top. Okay, so let's put the back in first. Doesn't matter if you do the back or the front first. And I wanna make sure 
that this corner here is inside here so that I make sure that it's going to fit inside my binding, right? So I want to have it tucked nice and neatly inside of there. I'm just going to make sure. Awesome, it's coming together. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. I don't know what it is about making my own books that is so satisfying. I am a lifelong journaler. I've had so many different kinds of writing journals, like since high school, but especially through college and in grad school, I've had a pretty consistent journaling practice, not always morning pages style, but a consistent journaling practice. So I go through a lot of journals. So being able to affordably create my own makes me happy. And I don't ever have that feeling of, oh, I don't want to write in this. You know, sometimes somebody gives you a really beautiful journal and you don't want to write in it. So there, my friends, we have our handmade book that we can play in, write in, paint in. I've got these manila folders. I've got some nice mixed media paper, even a couple that already have some things on it. And the last thing I want to do is I want to turn this into a little pocket here <coughs> Excuse me, with my nice tape. And I've noticed my heater's on kind of nonstop today because like I said, it's... Um, well, according to my computer, it's seven degrees outside right now. So if that noise is really loud, I would love the feedback about that. Okay, so I cut that in half so I have two thinner strips. And I'm going to just come in right at the edge here because I want as much pocket space as possible. And this was one of those happy accidents because I didn't trim the folder ahead of time. Those are a little bit long. I don't want that sticky stuff sticking out right now. I'll figure I'll just paint over them or something at some point. And now I have a nice little tight pocket. I love pockets in my journal for, you know, slipping little bits and pieces or little notes into. And so that was an easy way was just to fold that over. And now I have this nice tight little pocket in my hand painted book. And so when I go to paint the cover, you can see that this paints nice and flat. And I would also stick some paper underneath the edges of the cover to keep the paint from getting all over my nice fresh signatures that I just made, but that might be the next step. But there, my friends, is a simple way to make your own hand-bound book using an old book cover, using some recycled canvas boards, I did the exact same process, but this one was a little more precise because I wanted it to fit, and so I actually tucked them in, right? So I used the canvas boards. I used some nice heavyweight, just uh, laser print paper. That This one is going to be great for writing, so I may do my end of year journal in this one that I'll have to decide, or you could do this with some nice chipboard like the back of any kind of pad of paper. So um, not a lot of supplies needed here. Use what you have at home. It's a great way to use up paper that you haven't been using. But I hope you had fun 
And I hope that you, especially if you've never made your own book before, I know that you'll get addicted to doing that. So some double stick tape, a bone folder, and all some waxed thread, and a book binding or big embroidery needle. And the ruler and a pencil are about all you need for this process. So have fun, my friends. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Manette. This is Painting in Your PJs. And I'll see you tomorrow, December 1st, for the start of our end of year reflections journal process. Super excited to share that with you. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Bye-bye, my friends.